everyone, today we are performing the waived and non-waived HIV-1 and 2 assay. We are just doing the waived portion, that means that you can use whole blood, such as a finger stick or a lavender top tube, which is what we're going to use. The non-waived is considered moderate complexity using serum or plasma from a gold top, just like the one we have here. We're just going to stick with the lavender top, okay? Alright, so when you open up this uh, box it's got this lovely little reminder on the inside of the lid of how to do perform the testing there is also a little card inside that shows you how to perform the testing as well okay it does take a 15 minute incubation time this is the quick reference so uh, it starts out with this part here where it's talking to you about the procedure. All right. Then it's got some nice pictures uh, showing you the finger stick process. It's telling you not to use a venipuncture sample here. Um, that would be for the uh, wave testing. Here you've got... The next part, we do use a, a venipuncture tube in class um, because that is what that is what we have. Okay, so first things first, we're going to pull out one of the little disposable test stands. As you saw in there, you're going to want to label it. patient one okay there is a little frosted area for you to do that I just didn't put it on there okay and from the top of the uh, test kit here you're gonna open it and find that you have a buffer solution at the top of the little syringe looking thing. Okay, so this is the buffer solution that goes right into the bottom of the stand there. Okay, it immediately falls in and sits nicely. Here is, here's the solid phase. So this is an immunochromatographic assay all right, since we know that it's, it's a wave test and you can do a finger stick, here's a lancet and a bandage. We're gonna set those aside because we're not gonna use that in class. All right, so from a finger stick, you would put that at the patient's finger at the base here and pull, draw up the blood. Instead, since we are using Since we're using a lavender top tube, trying to get this all on camera, um, we're going to invert it, whole blood here. And pull up just a little bit of whole blood. Okay, I'm gonna cap it in my stand. All right, now what I'm going to do is allow a bubble to come up to the tip here and allow it to go into this, oh my goodness, it's the angle from trying to show you. Okay, so it went up into the tip there. Now, I'm throwing that away. I'm going to put the column down into the buffer, and the buffer is going to start pulling up through the solid phase of the um, liquid chromatography here. So we've got 15 minutes. All right, so I'm gonna allow you to see the liquid come up and form that nice 
uh, QC band. Okay, there's going to be a QC band, and um, if it's positive, there would be a test band. If the patient is negative, then that test band will not form. Okay, so you can see the dye going up. So this is a qualitative um, test, and it's just detecting the presence or absence of antibodies to HIV-1 and HIV-2. Um, if you were to perform this test and it was positive, you have to do a confirmatory test, and that would be the Western blot test. I don't have the Western blot test here, so we're not going to do that in this video. So you should see, you should see that line very shortly, the QC line. So this uh, HIV is an enveloped virus, and it has um, it has a uh, affinity to the helper T cells, which are part of the human immune system that cause basically like the telephone type of um, process where the helper T is going to go and uh, talk to a monocyte, see what the monocyte has displayed on uh, its cell membrane, and then take that information to the other T cells and, um, <clears throat> and B cells to create some antibodies for them. However, um, what ends up happening with this virus is that the uh, T cell ends up getting infected with the virus through attachment of the virus and then using the uh, the T cells own genetic uh, processes to end up replicating the virus the virus within that cell. So the HIV cell ends up fusing with the host cell surface, and then HIV RNA reverse transcriptase integrase and other viral proteins then end up entering the host cell. The viral DNA is formed by reverse transcriptase, and that's why it's called a retrovirus, by the way. The viral DNA is transported across the nucleus and integrates into the host DNA. So the new viral DNA is used as genomic RNA to make viral proteins, and then new viral RNA and proteins move to the cell surface, and a new immature HIV virus forms and buds off of um, buds off of the cell. So, the HIV virus ends up making the helper T cell really unable to produce um, uh, anything other than the virus um, after a while. It also ends up messing up the cell membrane, causing um, the cell to uh, maybe lice as well. So all the blebbing or the uh, budding out of that cell membrane from the helper T cell ends up destroying the cell. So you've got all these uh, new viruses out there ready to infect other viruses. All right, so you've seen that this QC band has already formed. Let's take a look at um, the card again to show you how the company says that you're to interpret this. So if you have after 15 minutes, so we're not done with the 15 minutes yet, we're at the 10 minute mark. But after the 15 minutes, you look for the control line. If you have the control line, that means that you do have a valid test, okay? That's internal QC. So if you were missing that control line, it would be considered an invalid test. And the first thing that you would want to do is redo the test. You don't know if this is a bad lot or just a bad uh, cartridge or you did something wrong 
uh, when doing it. Maybe it didn't go down into the buffer seat down in the buffer all the way. Maybe you didn't get enough specimen in the tip when you first started. So there's a couple of reasons why that could happen. So uh, here, if we're looking at um, these two sets here, you've got a faint line and a really strong line. And those are both considered to be reactive, meaning that you've got um, the antibodies in there in a strong enough amount or um, a high enough amount that you end up uh, having reactivity here. Okay, when you don't have any type of faint line that you can see, that ends up being a non-reactive or a negative test. And that means that the cartridge did not de uh, detect any of the HIV antibodies in the sample. All right, so we are at eight minutes now. So I'll get back to you when it's done. All right, so that's the end of our 15 minutes, and we did not end up having a second line there, a test line, and so we are going to call this non-reactive or also negative. All right, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.